Hang on. Hold on. It's certainly not your average Shepherd's Hut chassis. Well, today it is getting exciting, folks. Our chassis are on the road. For real this time. What? The fence lasted a night in the wind. Go on then. All, right, all the gates are unlocked. I can't do anything more until they actually show up. We've got two or three options with the route. Priority really is just get them in here. I can pull them around with the car or the tractor in the future. Just don't want to block the main road. Now the wagon is loaded. I think we can get on with that fencing job. Well, it's T minus 30 minutes, and it's just started belting it down. Oh, I was hoping for blue skies and black chassis, but never mind. But in the positives, at least we finished the fence. We're almost dog proof up there. Just need to put a bit of stock fence onto the gate, the farm gate, and then I'm just gonna cable tie it on. Blooming weather is far from ideal for our big moment. Only a few minutes off now, and I'm just trying to work out how we're going to get it up because. But the guy who called was the escort vehicle, and he's in a discovery, so it would be reasonable to assume that he's going to have a tow wall. So let's just forget about that idea. Let's just go and stand patiently at the gate. Well, the escort vehicle's just arrived. He's not, he's not sold on the idea of getting them up here. Uh, there is space to get them up the lane, but perhaps not on the lorry. Once you get far past the first bend down there, it's definitely doable. Oh, I need to go and unload all the wheels. Hopefully fit them in the back of here. And then he's going to tow them up with his car. Oh wow, they literally are on the main road. Yikes. Tell you what, I am so glad I'm not the one towing this. You're good there. Yeah, you're fine there. I'll just get the front. Yeah, I think you're all right. Just have to go slow. Hang on. Oh yeah, you're all right. You might have to come. Mm. It's catching on a tree. Hang on. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Whoa. Oh, he's getting some timber under there. Get right a bit. We've never 
walked to nowhere like this before, mate. Hey? We've never walked to nowhere like this before. People that build these build them in big industrial units. Yeah, yeah, yeah but big farms. They're not stupid, isn't they? No. This is uh, not ideal, is it? Tractor to the rescue, maybe, maybe. Tractor is so close to being out of fuel. Let's hope it lasts. I've got more if we need to. deal with that sort of stress. <laughs> well, we just don't know how many, like we blocked the main road and it was like we're turn, like it was like a 10 point turn. To get up the drive? No, up to get lane. it up, Sorry. out on the other road. It's so long you can't just turn it tight, otherwise it would jackknife and hit the side of the car and stuff. I'm just so glad I wasn't towing it. How long was the road blocked for? Well, only five minutes, but it felt like about five hours. <laughs> little uh, tracks came to the rescue a little bit. Because the, the tow ball was jammed in it because there was so much weight, so we had to like lift it, the tractor up there. If we put the tow ball on the back of the tractor, we can we can do this with it, up and down, which means it won't jam again like it did on that Land Rover. Look, Although he had... I need to think about how I'm getting to school and who I'm picking up. Well, do you need to take that car? Well, that's what I was going to do. <laughs> You're doing the school run with... Uh... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. What are we doing to ourselves? The guys were like, you're actually going to build this yourself? Have you ever done one before? I was like, no. nope. Joe's going to have to do a bit of off-roading to do the school run. Come on, Maggie. It's funny how all the lorry drivers and delivery drivers and the farmers and everyone I spoke to over the past few months about this delivery like oh yeah get up there you'll get around the corner we've had bigger up there not sure they have <laughs> certainly not any wider well there we go what a day we finally got to the point where we've got the chassis and to be telling you the truth at this point I am completely overwhelmed and completely daunted by the whole task just the logistics of moving them around is going to be hard enough It's certainly not your average shepherd tuck chassis and possibly we've gone a bit big uh, but go big or go home yeah so it's a big build isn't it well, one of the very first things we've got to work out is how we're going to get the top one off the bottom one remember this is two chassis that's why it's doubled up for transportation that's what they do they take the four wheels or the eight wheels off uh, so the quad axle stud, what well, they're called stub axles, uh, are there. So we need to work out how we're going to get it off. I think most people will telehandle it off. We can call some favours and try that. The other option is that we put down either timbers or DPC even along the two bearers. It's only touching under this point here, this kind of section of the axle section I guess it is now that with a, enough tugging should be able to slide along the rails it's not ideal but if we can put both of them down the side there it's definitely long enough for two we could then go about pulling the top one off it's not going to fall off because it's got the outriggers and it's got the cross member across there. So as long as we keep it pretty much central, it could be slid off. And supposedly that is done sometimes. 
we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, we'll get this video out before we try it and then we can hear all your suggestions. But in reality, I'm not even sure a telehandler can manoeuvre in here to get it off now. If they were a bit smaller, you could possibly jack up the top one, prop it, and then pull the other one out from underneath. Or maybe from a safety perspective, we need to try and manoeuvre both of them as they are out. We'll have to knock down one of the old walls, concrete walls, it's all wonky anyway. Try and get them out into the field and then pull it off where we've got a bit more space. But that's pretty heavy now, it's doubled up. Anyway, if you haven't checked out how these were made, we did a little tour. I went up and filmed behind the scenes at UE Chassis, the guys who we bought these from. Uh, so a shout out to them, but an even bigger shout out to the guys who came and got these up here. They just couldn't believe the lane when they saw it. They'd seen the maps and stuff like that, but they were just, they, they don't deal with private customers normally. So not many people are stupid enough to do this. So normally they're delivered to big units, big warehouses, whatever. Um, not little country lanes, but. Anyway, we will be jumping on this build very, very soon. Components are ready, bits and bobs are ready. The joists are cut, the roof trusses are here, the insulation's here. We can slowly get our teeth into this and uh, make it happen. Thank you for watching, remember if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time.